Alrighty then, today I'm going to show you how to double the power of your flash! How is that possible, Marcus? Well, I'm going to show you a number of ways that it's possible, so here we go. The thing that most people like to do nowadays is shoot in high-speed sync. I'm going to explain what that is in a minute, but that's the first thing that's robbing you of power, because high-speed sync gives you considerably less power than if you were not in high-speed sync. So what is high-speed sync? Let me show you. Let's say this is a sensor, right? We're going to pretend this is your camera sensor here. Now, most people think that the way a camera sensor works is that it just opens up all of a sudden and exposes the picture and then it closes, right? And it just, it's just literally the whole thing just opens and closes. Well, it doesn't really work that way. This is how it works. It has these two things called curtains and the curtains and the sensor is the heart of your camera. Now these curtains, they don't just magically like open and then close and then that's it. That's how it uh, exposes a picture. They actually crawl up your sensor. So there's only a slit that's being exposed at any given moment. It's not like the whole thing just goes brip, oh, brip, like that. You know, people think like uh, the old mirror reflex. I think that, that that's what exposes the shutter. Well, in mirrorless world, no, it's actually, it, it's actually been like this forever. And even motion picture cameras, they have these slits that turn, but with uh, still pictures, it goes up and down. So what happens is you've got these two shutters, upper and lower, or first and second, or front and rear, whatever you want to call it. But what happens is the first one starts going up, exposing the, uh, the sensor, and the second one starts coming up from below. So it kind of goes like, like this. And you've got this slit of light that's being exposed as this thing goes up and um, and it you know varies in how wide it is and how fast it goes based on your settings but that's generally the idea so when you have a flash if it was to just flash bam all of a sudden really fast you'd only get this much of the sensor exposed and the rest of it would be black so if you ever get these black lines that may be the reason but anyway so what high speed sync is it's a new fancy way of exposing the whole thing as this is crawling up and what it does is it's actually flashing a whole bunch of times really fast. It's going like this. It's going flash, 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 flash. So you can't see it as super fast. It's like, you know, a dozen times in one five thousandth of a second. Uh, so to you, you think it's just one flash. It's not. It's a whole bunch of little flashes while this thing is going like that. And that's what makes high speed sync possible. But the problem is your poor flash is going like crazy, going bam, 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 bam. So it's like recharging, flashing, recharging, flashing like a dozen times in a five thousandth of a second, there's no way you can get full power out of that. That's why you're getting partial power with high speed sync. Now, if you were to have a slower exposure and you just pop it the flash once really fast, you're gonna get more power like in the old days. So that's why high speed sync is not gonna give you as much flash power as non high speed sync. So how do you do non high speed sync? Give me a camera. Thank you. Oh, it's an A1, that's pretty good. Thanks. All right, so the way a camera works is generally the flash sync isn't really that fast on any camera. Like the, the typical camera maximum flash sync speed is like maybe 200. Some have 250, some have 160, some Panasonics are like 150th. This one, the A1 goes up to 1 400th and that's it. This is the fastest uh, shutter sync you can get. So it's not very fast. That's why high speed sync allows you to go like 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, all the way up to 8,000th of a second. Uh, but there's a price you pay and I usually have less power for it. You have, first of all, the shutter speed be pretty slow. You know, not any faster than the maximum sync speed, which say 200th of a second. And then you take an ND filter and put it on the lens. An ND filter makes the image darker. So that makes your sky or background nice and dark and allows you to shoot at f1.8 or anything like that so you can get the blurry background. So that's what the ND filter is for. You want that blurry background, you need to shoot at f1.8 or 1.4. So you need the ND filter for that and to darken the sky and all that. ND filters are registered in, they don't write normal amounts on there. Like one stop is considered 0.3 of an ND filter. So uh, three stops is 0.9. Uh, if it says three on here, it's actually 10 stops. So I you know it's kind of confusing, but just remember that 0.3 on the ND filter is actually one stop. And one stop of light is double or half the amount of light. If you do non-high speed sync, the whole, the flash just goes full power, bam, all at once and that's it. You get maximum power. If you were to do a high speed sync, it would go bam, 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 like that really fast. 
and then it would be like a lot less power. And the difference in that between non-high-speed sync and high-speed sync can be up to three stops of light. Now remember, each stop is double the amount of light. That's a lot of power being lost. Most high-speed sync flashes lose between one to one and a half stops of light when you switch to high-speed sync. Keep that in mind. Now the downside of using ND filters is everything gets really dark and it makes focusing really difficult. If you're on autofocus, it might not even be able to autofocus because it sees everything as silhouettes and black and it doesn't see an eye or recognize a face or anything. And even if you, even if you went to manual, I mean, it's pretty hard. Now, the, the, the plus side of that is a lot of the newer cameras are able to compensate for that. So what it does is when you, when you have a flash on here and it's too dark and you have an ND filter, the camera temporarily lightens everything up so you can see what, you know, you can get, a, a, you can see the person lit up. I mean, it's only all grainy and everything, but that's just a simulation. It's not going to be the way to picture it. It just lightens it up temporarily so you can focus. And then when you're ready to shoot, it goes back down to dark again, and then you're ready to do it. So that's the cool thing about the newer cameras. Some people hate the fact that it, it, it lightens the picture automatically, but it's actually there for a reason. It's so you can see what you're doing when you have ND filters on there before you take the flash. So that that's good. Anyway, so that's one way to brighten the power of your flash is don't use high-speed sync. Another way is, well, a lot of people like to use soft boxes. Well, another way to obviously brighten the power of your flash is to not use soft boxes. And a lot of, a lot of people think you have to use a soft box to get flattering lighting. You don't. And I've already covered this a bunch of times. I'm gonna cover it even more in the next few videos. Uh, but generally what I like to use is this, the reflector dish. These, this is an AD200 and uh, for the, the 600 here, this is a standard reflector dish. There's a diffuser that goes on front of it. And believe it or not, this diffuser, this plastic uh, pebble diffuser, hardly uses, takes the light down at all. This is amazing, like maybe one-tenth of a stop. I was amazed. I thought this was gonna really take the light level down. It doesn't. So anyway, um, it helps soften the light and the reflector helps intensify the light. Now this is the old school style. This is the one that has like the pebbled silver interior. They have a newer style now, which is even more high tech. It has these prisms or this prism design, whatever you call it, in there. And that really, really, really intensifies the light. So you can actually get a stop more light from this kind of reflector versus this kind of reflector. This is the old school style. It works pretty good, but this actually, depending on the strobe, can give you up to a stop more power. That's double the amount of power just by using a reflector like this. It's over, over something like this. That's mind-blowing. And, the, uh, and the, the frosted diffuser doesn't take the light down that much at all. So you actually get a little bit of diffused light too, which I love using these. I've used this setup more than anything else. I don't use a lot of soft boxes. I do use them, but not as much as this when I'm on location. And plus when you're in, you know, out in the wild and you're on the beach or in the desert, it's usually windy and the soft boxes blow over. It's a hassle to set up. You're, you're, you're attracting all kinds of attention. Maybe you're not even supposed to be taking pictures and the soft boxes are just, you know, it just makes it, you're just a target for all kinds of uh, attention. But this, when you just have a reflector on there, you double the amount of light and it doesn't blow over in the wind. It's really fast. You take pictures and you run, you know I mean? It, it, it's great. So that's the second way in, of uh, intensifying the amount of light coming out of your um, flash. The third way is to use multiple flashes. I mean, I know this is pretty basic, but a lot of people, it's like they just forget. I mean, I do this a lot. I put like an 8200 on this side and an 8200 on this side, or you put two together and you get double the amount of light. And it's, it's just simple. I mean, these things are cheap. It's good to have uh, a couple of them always with you. I always have two lights anyway, one for the front and one for the back. So um, no matter what, I always have at least two, sometimes three or four lights with me. So doubling the amount of flashes obviously doubles the amount. And then of course the last way is to just have the light closer. That doesn't mean the camera has to be closer. You can be way back there with a telephoto as long as the light is closer to the person. I mean, literally one or two feet just the difference of one or two feet closer to the person can double the amount of light. You don't think it makes a lot of difference, but every foot that makes a big difference. Um, so that is how you can double the amount of light. Oh, and you know, if you're using uh, speed lights, 
I mean, there's not a lot of light that comes out of these things. Definitely, just remember, don't ever use speed lights outside in high speed sync because you're cutting your power in half. You're losing half the power of your speed light if you have it in high speed sync. Use an ND filter and um, do it the way they used to do it in the old days. You know, one one sixtieth of a second with an ND filter. And you can get that blurry background and all that stuff you like with a speed light outside in the sun. Now, speaking of using multiple lights to get more light on your subject, a lot of people only have a speed light. That's all they have. Well, actually, a lot of people have several speed lights. As long as it's the same brand, here's something you can do. There's a cool gadget made by Westcott. This is, uh, I'll put the link down below for this thing. You screw it on top of a light stand and it has three hot shoes attached to it. So you can attach three different speed lights onto one stand. So now you got three times the power. How cool is that? This is a great way of getting a lot of power from nothing but speed lights. I mean, speed lights aren't that expensive, so might as well get three of them, right? I mean, if you can't afford an 8200, this is even half the price of that. And it has a hole in the middle here, so you can put an umbrella shaft in there. And this is pretty self-explanatory here. Now you have three speed lights bouncing into an umbrella. Silver umbrellas are great for, if you don't, I mean, pushing light through a diffuser eats up a lot of light, but reflecting light off of a silver umbrella gives you a lot more light. So if you, I seriously suggest if you're using speed lights and you want to have a big softer light, use a silver umbrella. They're easy, they're cheap, they're really cheap, and it's a great way of getting a big amount of light back to the person. And three speed lights, Gives you three times the amount of light. How cool is that? Yeah! Pretty darn cool. The difference is pretty amazing. An AD200 with non-high speed sync is actually brighter than an AD400 in high speed sync. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use AD200s to get the same power as an AD600. Oh, oh. How is that possible? Well, watch the video. Anyway, I'm here to uh, show you all kinds of lighting tips and tricks. That's what this series is about. I'm gonna just rattle them off one by one every other day. I'm gonna make another video and you're gonna learn a lot about lighting and hopefully you'll have a lot of fun and learn and be educated. And that's what I'm here for. So again, there you go. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I will see you in the next video on the subject of lighting. Until then, have a good day. I'll see you then, bye.